So if the Galaxy S26 brings back the Exynos, the real fear isn't benchmarks, it's the fast for 2 minutes then hot and slow experience. Today's leak suggests Samsung is trying to fix that with a much more serious Exynos chip but the trade-off could be regional confusion and which version I am buying anxiety. The scariest part about a new Galaxy isn't the camera bump, it's the moment you realize your phone is powerful until it heats up and then it starts negotiating with you. And that's exactly why the Galaxy S26 Exynos comeback rumors is making people nervous. Stay with this because in a minute you will know what the leaks actually say about the new chip, which S26 models may get it and the one version that might be the safe pick. So here is the plan, we will decode the latest Exynos 2600 leaks, translate what it means for heat and sustained performance and then answer the real world questions. Like is the trade worth it especially if Samsung is trying to protect pricing. According to reports, the Exynos 2600 is said to build on a 2nm process and use a 10 core CPU. The same leak lists a prime core up to 3.9 GHz, 3 performance cores at 3.25 GHz and 6 mid cores at 2.75 GHz. And for graphics, it's rumored to use an AMD Juno GPU clocked at 985 MHz. But the number, one thing that decides whether you will love or hate this phone isn't 3.9 GHz. It is whether that speed stays there after the heat builds up. A small process like 2nm is often used to chase better efficiency but whether Samsung's 2nm ends up better in practice is still an open question. Now it remains to be seen if Samsung's 2nm is actually better than TSMC's near 3nm in real outcomes. So yes, on paper this can be a step forward but paper never had to run Genshin at 60fps for 25 minutes. Now here is the part that decides the buyer's experience. According to reports, the Galaxy S26 and S26 Plus could be used Exynos 2600 in at least some countries, while China, Japan, South Korea and North America may get a Snapdragon chip. And the same report says the Galaxy S26 Ultra is expected to come with Snapdragon globally. Now that matters because Samsung already did the opposite recently, note the Galaxy S25 series used the Snapdragon 8 Elite across the lineup so many people got used to no chip lottery. If the S26 brings the split back, the first question won't be how fast is it, it will be which S26 I am actually looking at. There is also a business reason this keeps coming back. The industry insider says Exynos success is important to Samsung because it can improve profitability for its smartphone and chip business and help secure market leadership. Translation: If Snapdragon is the expensive rent, Exynos is Samsung trying to own the house. So if you are worried about performance and overheating, don't let the launch keynote decide your money. When reviews drop, only trust these stress points. 15 to 30 minutes sustained gaming FPS, not the first 60 seconds. Temperature over time, not it got warm, actually trend. Throttling behavior, does it step down gently or fall off the cliff. Battery drain during sustained load, heat usually takes power with it. So here is the honest answer based on the leaks, Exynos 2600 looks serious on paper with 2nm claim, a 10 core layout and an AMD GPU mentioned in the leak details. But the regional split rumors means the buying decision may be less about S26 vs S26 Plus and more about Exynos region vs Snapdragon region. And if report is right that the S26 Ultra stays Snapdragon globally, that model could be the simplest choice for people who want to minimize uncertainty. So what do you guys think of this Samsung's Exynos plan? Let me know in the comments below. With that being said, subscribe if you like and I will see you in the next one.